Yeah. Uh, ah! Tricked! Bamboozled. You ready? Welcome back, boys and girls! Welcome back once again to the basement of Barry Marvin. All right, as always, I'm your host, Barry Marvin, my lovely co-host, lab assistant, <coughs> man about town, <laughs> slightly choking, Jacques Strop. Jacques, how you been? I'm tired. We haven't done this in a while. <laughs> Jacques is extremely tired. I'm not woken up for this. He, we woke him up, dragged him out of his, you know, whatever you want to call that pit of despair. I'm going to shove an ice pick in my ear. <laughs> <laughs> so, we haven't done one in a while. We have some, some news. Yeah. Uh, some news I'll tell you now. Some news I'll tell you later. First news is we are back on Kalamazoo's cable access. Oh no. Public media network. Because you can upload from your house so they can't mess up the DVDs anymore. <laughs> we get to be Saturday nights at 11 Ooh. p.m. Someone's going to be awake at on 11 p.m. Channel 188. The only people that are watching cable access are old. No oh, man, they got, they got the mummy and the monkey too. Yeah, but... But you know what they don't have? A good Hydra time slot. Hydro Flamingo. Oh. They don't have Hydro Flamingo. What's their time slot? Theirs? Yeah. yeah. I don't know what theirs is. I was worried about Is it mine. earlier than ours? Did they get a better time slot than us? <laughs> 11 is the perfect horror of time slot. <laughs> 11 p.m. Saturdays. That's classic. And then there's uh, Sundays, so that way you can besmirch the name of God. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's uh, Other World's TV. We're, uh, we're playing. Uh, we're playing right now, as a matter of fact. Oh. Yeah. Six p.m. Other World's TV. All of these are Eastern Standard Time because I don't know how to figure the other times out. When he said one of the bumpers was going to be a commercial, I didn't know it was going to be the first one. <laughs> no, no, no. That's for later. We got an exciting new thing for you. But first, it's not that exciting. First, we must discuss the the director known by the name of Larry Buchanan. Aww. Larry David. No. <laughs> Larry King. No. no. <laughs> you wish it was Larry King. I don't. <laughs> I love Larry Buchanan movies because he took movies that were already made and made zero budget movies out of them. On purpose. They told him, here's a couple, here's here's five dollars in a motorcycle, go we'll, we'll make a movie. Uh no, that's common rider. Yeah. <laughs> um they, they told him, Oh here, we have Invasion of the Saucer Men. Well cool, what do you want me to call it? In, uh, in, uh, invasion of the eye people. What? I what? <laughs> they got eye creatures. They got eyes all over. It's got John Ashley in it. You know, it's not awful. It's terrible. There's Curse of the Swamp Monster. There's uh, It's Alive, which is not the same as the It's Alive you think of. It's not the mutant baby. It's the thing that lives in the cave. Got Tommy Kirk in it. Tommy Kirk got thrown out of Disney because you know he liked boys. Apparently, Disney didn't like that he liked boys. No. So, there you go. Well, as we all know, Walt Disney, pioneer of his time, is about <laughs> everything wrong you can be with a human. <laughs> so, what we're watching tonight is legitimately one of my favorite movies being remade. It's a Larry Buchanan movie. Uh, the movie I like, She Creature, with the big, the big monster, you know, the giant monster boobies. <laughs> you got the little claws right there. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're all right. <sighs> So his is called Creature of Destruction. It's not as good a monster. No. It's the exact same plot. Hypnotized back to the primordial time for you to turn into a monster and kill all of my enemies. Nice. Plus this guy, okay. the hypnotist isn't nearly as creepy as the one from She Creature. He's, he's so close to her when he's whispering his naughty little hypnotic commands that he, he, he keeps looking like he's going to lick her nostril. Oh. It's part of the... Part of the kill charm. all of my enemies. <laughs> oh. I am right here with you. You will be my brother. You will be the primordial. Talking to the best of the Indiana Jones thing. There we go. There we go. That's better. You're just kind of, kind of creeping me out. There we go. All right. So, movie's called Creature of Destruction. We're going to have you go start watching it. Well, and apparently then... it's called She Creature. <laughs> no, no, that's the, that's the first one. This is, we're watching the, 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 the crappy remake. So, go. Be gone with you. Get out.
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. What is the ultimate science can offer? Truth. One of these truths is this. Hidden within each of us is not only the capacity to love and hate, but to take that final step to be not only a creator, but a destroyer, a mad, unreasoning killer. That final breakdown of our manners, mores, customs, that take us away from the millions of years leading to civilization, back to the animalistic, the monster that lies within each of us. And now, as is my custom, I come to that final prognostication Dr. Basso predicts. and extrasensory perception. I call on Dorina for a prediction. This very night, in our very time, and on the shores of this lake, the prognostication is murder. Really? I seem to prefer this one. Are you enjoying your weekend with the Idle Rich? Frankly, it's pretty heady stuff for a psychologist. Some of those tycoons in there, and your father included, scare the heck out of me. <laughs> you want to get away from them for a while? Oh, now there's a brilliant idea. See what happens when you hang around me? I do. Let's go. Out of the night, it's a black hooded figure. You're broken the law. Now he's on your trail. Run, hasten, her and say it's gonna accelerate. Or wind up in the Gotham jail. Here he's going now. Look in the sky. It's a back signal light. He's a man on the scene in regards to stopping trouble. So don't participate with infractions of the law. These advantage should have some apprehension with contemplating breaking the law. Here he comes now. Look in the sky. It's a back signal light.
talks are stopping trouble. So don't participate with infractions of the law. Or rob of these and bandits, but you have some apprehensions when contemplating breaking the law. Here he come now. Look in the sky. dear so that grabby little man finally let you go that grabby little man happens to represent an investment portfolio of a million bucks <laughs> where's lynn and ted they went for a walk down by the lake i wish they hadn't oh why you heard what dr basso said something terrible is going to happen along the beach tonight <laughs> After that demonstration, how can you be so skeptical? Demonstration? That wasn't a demonstration. That was an act, purely for the entertainment of our members, nothing more. He takes a girl and, and puts her in a hypnotic trance and takes her back to a former life. And you're not impressed. <laughs> Money impresses me, baby. Money, not goo-goo eyes. <laughs> oh, uh, except yours, of course. Do you know where Dr. Basso is? Nope. Not unless he uh, disappeared in a puff of smoke. <laughs> crazy about that Dr. Basso. Basso? John Basso? Do you know him? I know of him. Well, he really put on a wild show tonight. A show? He took a girl back to her former life. I wish you had been there to see it. Well, so do I. It's possible. Really? Really. <laughs> Stay here. Ted. Who lives here? This is the honeymoon cottage. You go back to the lodge. Call the police. Go on. Go on. I'll wait for you here. Too, like a pile driver hit him. Same for her over there. $120 in here. That lets robbery out. <laughs> Seaweed. All the way to the door. 
Hmm. Carpet's wet here. See if you can find me some powder. We better call the lab boys. What do you think would make a print like that? I don't know, a clever man could have forged it. You think a man did that? <laughs> you got any better ideas? No. Call the lab boys and wait for them here. I want pictures, lots of them. It uh, may come back. <laughs> what might come back? Come on. Here, have the boys rope off this entire area right down to the water. Come on. Beasley's been here. They've only just arrived. Seem like nice kids. Officer. Yes, Mrs. Crane. Officer, I don't know if this is important, but Dr. Basso predicted something terrible would happen along the beach. Dr. Basso? An entertainer, a hypnotist. We booked here for the week. He's a clairvoyant. There was a demonstration, and he said that some creature out of time was hovering over us. More than a million years old. I think we'd better have a talk with this Dr. Basso. Where's he staying? He's in cabin 47. We appreciate your cooperation. Lieutenant Blake. Yes. Lieutenant, I'd like to point something out to you. Now, I saw those bodies, and whoever mutilated them has a very special problem. Yes, I realize that. Tell me something new, Captain. I am a psychologist. Well, then, as a psychologist, what is your opinion of this Dr. Basso and his monster theory? That anything is possible. As a scientist, I keep an open mind. Yes, Captain. Anything is possible. We'll see you in the morning. talk to you. I understand you put on quite a performance for the guests tonight. A honeymoon couple was murdered. What has that to do with me? You predicted something would happen in the beach area. Yes, I had a message. A premonition, if you like. When did you get this message? Tonight, during my demonstration. Many times during states of heightened concentration, I receive sensory impulses. I see. Had you ever been to the couple's cottage or to that particular part of the beach area before tonight? No. Mr. Crane said you were talking about a, a monster. Yes. There was no doubt in my mind that she would come. She? She. A huge, indestructible creature that comes out of the beginning of time. She will strike again and again. Yes, yeah, sure. I feel her presence even now. And she calls to you? I seem to be the only one who can hear her. And all this hocus-pocus is supposed to be scientific? The science of ultimate research into the hidden recesses of man's mind. 
Yeah, well, right now, Dr. Basso, I'd say you were as good a suspect as any. I don't have to believe this scientific jazz of yours. Each man is entitled to his own beliefs, Lieutenant. Mine are on the record. So I've heard. You believe a, a monster lurks in each of us. Hmm. You've done your homework well, Lieutenant. I try, Dr. Basso. I try. I warn you, she will come ashore again. When? Alas, I do not know. That's a lot of help. Midnight. How do you feel? You've had me in deep hypnosis, and I asked you not to do that. You were tired. You needed rest. I need to get away from here and away from you. I feel like I've been dead, and you do that again, and I'm going to leave you. Sitting here like a piece of clay. You will never leave me. You cannot. Someday I will. Dorina, you mustn't talk that way. You are not only necessary to my psychic researches, you are necessary to me as a man. We are one. We are inseparable. Soon we will be rich, famous, powerful. The hate you now feel will turn to love. Dorina. Close your eyes. You will never leave me. As long as I live, I will possess you. Something beyond yourself makes you need me. Do you understand? I understand. I found you in the gutter. What were you before I found you, Dorina? Nothing. I gave you a new life. Soon a more magnificent life will be ours. Now listen closely. There was an accident tonight here at Tanglewood. Good morning, Ted. Good morning. Hello, uh... Lieutenant Blake seems to be a nice guy. Efficient. Has anything turned up yet? Nope. Some folks think Basso had something to do with it. Do you? No, of course not. He lucked out with that prediction. I don't believe in that junk. Do you? Research has proven that some people have the ability to see into the future. Precognition, we call it. Oh. Well, then... Maybe he's got it. Look at that front page. Mm. Ted, you're brilliant in your line. Uh, psychic research, whatever that is. <laughs> we merely try to explain the unexplainable. I'm a simple man. I know only one way to judge a man's brilliance, and that's by the size of his bank account. <laughs> in that case, I'd rank right along with the village idiot. Nothing to it, making money. All you've got to do is want it more than the next guy. Why, even in my retirement, I play a little game every day with a newspaper. I look the front page over very carefully, searching for an item that I think might make me some money. Does it work? Sometimes. There's a million dollar idea in this headline. Read the last paragraph. 
Beach couple found murdered. One baffling aspect of the case concerns Dr. John Basso, who calls himself an investigative hypnotist. Last night at Tanglewood, a country club resort owned by the retired wealthy investor Sam Crane, Dr. Basso predicted that something horrible would happen on the beach area. He was questioned by police, but not held. You see a fortune in that? I smell money in it, and it's right up your alley. It's yours as a wedding present. <laughs> You're not serious. I couldn't be more serious. Why, we can take this two-bit sideshow man and make him into the greatest thing in the country. We'll put on a publicity campaign till everybody's talking about him. We'll manage him. We'll publish Basso books, syndicate columns, book him on the lecture tour, TV shows. Ted, there's money in this prediction. Big money. And between us, we can do it. And where do I fit in? Why, you give him the stamp of approval, Ted. Captain Theodore Dell, young psychologist says, Basso's experiment's amazing opens a whole new avenue into the understanding of the subconscious. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> 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 First one, Danny saw a spider. Uh, in, the basement? in Michigan? It can't be. <laughs> in it's the too, winter? It's too cold. Our dentures are never so bad. Our dentures are yeah. arguing. <laughs> I'm gonna argue with your dentures in a second. Yeah, shut up, yeah. dentures. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Boys and ghouls. <laughs> Boys and ghouls. Ropes. The thing you've always asked for, and here it is, the Baron Morbid's first movie, Baron Morbid's Basement of Mediocrity. You asked for it, we gave it to you! No one asked um, for this. I was going to say, I don't think anybody I asked. I also a lot of pin fell over my lab coat. We're <laughs> barely giving it to you. <laughs> so, it's a, it's a, it's, this is a professionally done DVD. Um, it's got cool stuff on the back. <laughs> there we go. It's got cool stuff on the front, a lovely artwork by our, fa our one of our fiends, Link Polderman. Oh, right. Got to see it with his hands. Look at me. <laughs> that's, what, see, that's what this is about. Look at me. I got my hat on, because that's the only thing that I wear. <laughs> that's no. And then on the back is Anthony Snyder's fan art that he oh. did of us. I love this fan art a lot, because there's... A universe in which he thinks that I wear blue. <laughs> Aww. Aww. You've worn blue a couple of times. Yeah, but like... For fan art? That's not what I'm known for. Now, That's the cool I'm thing doing. is we're going to do a, a limited run of autographed ones because we can make it pristine and not give it autographed to you because inside is a lovely <laughs> mini poster that Jacques and I will autograph for you and put back into it. Then it won't be shrink-wrapped anymore, but that's just how that works. And, uh, yeah, the hole in the DVD actually obliterated both of our faces. That's hilarious. Yeah. So, if you're interested in one of these, and you live in the United States of America, because postage everywhere is awful, um, I'll put a thing on the bottom here uh, for we're, PayPal. We're alienating most of our fan base right now. PayPal. We'll do PayPal. Uh, I'll also put the link for Cash App down here. Um, you can do Cash App or PayPal. Postage paid. So free shipping. You can have your own autographed copy of the Baron Morbid's Basement of Mediocrity for only $15. Oh. So for all of our three fans in the U.S., you can pay $15 to watch us when you could have done it for free over there. Oh, this has movies in it. Yeah, but they're both bad. It's got Spawn of the Sasquatch and the Camp Henderson Massacre. It's Ginger Squatch and Infinite Clowns. <laughs> Shut up, Tom! Don't we've, find out when they watch it. We've talked about them on the show before. We talked to, but it's got a different title. The poster for Ginger Squatch is right there. The it's, 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 it's a different title. So if you're interested, like I said, I'll put the thing here. Uh, I'll put a big block thing at the end of it where it goes beep and shows you, you know. You can uh, do the PayPal, you can do the Cash App. Uh, don't forget to give us your address. We are not mind readers. We'll put it in the description for the one person that reads that. For the person who reads the things underneath. There you go. So, there it is. The Baron Morbid's Basement of Mediocrity. Go back to the movie!
Why, it's the kind of escape stuff the whole world's crying for. Look at my wife and her friends. Ted, it's a natural. Why, it'll be a lark for me and money for you. Sorry, Sam. I wouldn't touch that kind of money. Wait till it starts piling up. That'll take care of your scruples. I've been trained to fight this sort of thing, not make a living from it. You'll get the hang of it. Well, you count me out. Ted, my daughter's going to need money. I have no intentions of supporting her and her husband. Why don't you go look at the act tonight? When you see him in action, you might change your mind. You mean after what's happened, you're going to stage another one of the... <laughs> sure. The show must go on. So think it over, Teddy boy. Think it over. Brilliant. Just brilliant. Morning, Lieutenant. Hi, Nick. Coroner's report? Yeah. Strangulation. Neck bones were mutilated to a pulp. Any idea of the weapon used? Well, it was like a... Good morning. Morning. Coffee? Yes, Mason, please. Well, it was like a steel hook, just tore him apart. Any special marks? Well, the imprint of a talon on the back of the necks. A talon? A talon, like, uh, like an eagle. Anything from the lab? No, well, not much. No prints. Just some salt water stains, some sand, some seaweed. Nothing of value missing. No evidence of anyone having been in the room. Well, do they have any idea what uh, caused the prints? Not a one. <laughs> this case gives me the, the creeps. I, I think we're up against a... Now, now, don't tell me. Let me guess. You think we're up against a... A monster. Ah, science fiction stuff. But very good business. Entree? have you been in this racket? <laughs> Still the non-believer, huh? Oh, save that for the paying guess. I assure you, I have been in communication with your thoughts. Oh? Well, then, uh, suppose you tell me why I came. You wish to discuss business with me? Hmm. Good guess. That was no guess, Mr. Crane. Fine, fine, but uh, let's not haggle. How would you like to be a rich man? I would like that very much. You've got something to sell. People pay for class. All this beats Coney Island, doesn't it? Television will pay top dollar for your act. I have no act. I have knowledge. That a boy. Keep a straight face. Hit him hard. Now our deal goes down the middle, 50-50. I'll back you until the thing gets rolling. Well, what do you say? I accept. Our deal begins as of now. We'll get the ball rolling tonight. I'm having some important people in. A newspaper man, a publisher, a psychologist, Dr. Dell. Captain Dell? The young Air Force psychologist? The same. He's a national hero. And if we can get his endorsement, we've got it made. Now play it big. Give them some more of that uh, out-of-the-world stuff. And they love it. Give them uh, more predictions, big ones. Another murder. She will come out of the lake again. And she must kill. <laughs> that a boy. Make them shiver. They should. In my hands lies a power that has been given to no other man. <laughs> boy, you are a salesman. 
Nothing like self-confidence. Now, this is business, big business. I'll have the papers drawn up right away. Your contract will be with my daughter. It's, uh, it's a sort of a surprise wedding present for her. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, how much time will you need to set up any gadgets? I use no gadgets, Mr. Crane. All right. I'll see you tonight. Make it big. I don't care what you do as long as we shake them. We shall pass through it together, and your loveliness will sweep a triumphant path before us. I will touch you, and you will awaken. Assistant. Her name is Dorina. She's beautiful. <laughs> Folks. <laughs> we have a very unusual act tonight. It's showtime, and may I present Dr. Basso. Gentlemen, it has been my very good fortune to find in this young lady the perfect hypnotic subject. Tonight, I will reveal the secret of life. You will now drift back through time and space. You will leave your present body and journey back. She's trying to resist him. What? And now for that phase of my work that has earned me such names as uh, fraud and charlatan. I am privileged tonight to have in my audience one of the country's most promising parapsychologists, Captain Theodore Dell. I'm sure many of you are familiar with his work in combat psychosis. Dr. Dell represents the School of Applied Psychology, my most outspoken critics. I invite him to join me tonight on the platform so that he may expose me as a fraud. Doctor? Well, thank you for a very nice introduction, but I think I'll sit this one out. The doctor refuses? Go on, Ted. Go on up. Now, you will find this most interesting. I will now prove that life is one unbroken chain, that it is endless, that we have been given continuous life, perpetual life. Tonight, I will take Dorina, an ordinary American girl, back through time and space to her former existence as Marion Rhodes. We will journey together back into history, 300 years. Would you care to question the subject?
Dorina, you will hear this man's voice. I understand. You will answer any questions he asks you, fully and truthfully. I will. She's all yours, Captain. Where were you born? Chicago. Were your parents born in America? Yes. What national blood strains do you carry? Belgian, Dutch, and French. No English? No. Did your parents or your grandparents ever live in England? No. Have you ever been to England? No. Have you ever been especially interested in English literature or history? No. You are now traveling back through time, through space, farther and farther back into the past. Stop when you wish, when you see something familiar. Do you wish to stop now? Yes. Tell me where you are now. In my father's study. What is your father's name? Ronald Welford Rose. Where is your father's house located? Oxnum Road in London. What is your name? Marion Anne Rhodes. And the day and the year? Sunday, October 12th, in the year of our Lord, 1618. You are smiling, Marion. Why? Captain Anthony Mead is due, and he's going to ask for my hand in marriage. You will hear another voice, Marion. You may answer that voice. The year is 1618. Who is your reigning monarch? James. Is he a beloved monarch? No. Hated. Beard. Who is Sir Edward Coke? He was Chief Justicular till James had him deposed. When was that? Last year, in November. Who is Frances Howard? Divorced wife of the Earl of Essex, now wife of the Lord Chamberlain, the Earl of Somerset. Upon what grounds was the divorce granted? It was said she was possessed by witches. Remarkable? Impressive, but hardly convincing. I have shown you one phase of my work. Marion Rhodes has related names and events that can be validated. But there are still more frontiers to be explored. However, the demonstration is over for tonight. I am being informed that the creature that visited the beach house will return again tonight. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Dorina's very tired. She needs rest. So if you will please excuse us. think of my experiment? Well, to be perfectly honest, I don't know. So if you don't mind, I would like to borrow your assistant, Dorina, for my own examination. In the interest of science, I'm more than willing. Now, if you'll excuse me, I think I'll get some air.
people I'm sure I've found just where it's at I played at love and loss But I'm not certain that's a reason To be so unhappy that I don't One of the boys got a glimpse of the whatever it is. Our artist did a work up there. Ever seen anything like that? No. Possibly fear of the unknown coupled with some strange sound made him think he saw that thing when all he really saw was a patch of fog. Possibly. You're not much help. Lieutenant, stop fighting the truth. It is just as possible the boy saw the soul of a living woman transmigrated to her first primitive body. Yeah, I know, a million years old. Perhaps more. Simply because you've never seen such a thing, don't deny that it can exist. It exists only in your publicity-seeking imagination. Think what you will, but the boy saw it. Basso, you're just this far away from being booked. On what charge? Being in communication with the occult world? Ah, Lieutenant, because of my publicity-seeking imagination, I find myself with an extremely heavy schedule. So if you don't mind, I will excuse you. to be out by yourself. Basso, please. Please let me go. You can get another assistant. There are lots of girls who... No, my dear. 
There are not lots of girls. There's only you. I'd go away quietly. I wouldn't tell anyone your secrets. You will do as I say. You will sleep and rest. Rest. You will understand and do as I say. Dr. Dell is going to come to talk to you. He will try to hypnotize you. You must resist this. You will resist. He is our enemy. He is trying to destroy us. Your beauty must not be destroyed. It is mine to do with as I will. You will love me as I love you. Now I must go. You do remember all I've said to you? Yes. Good afternoon. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> are you on? Yeah, we're on. We're rolling! We're rolling! What, what? Yeah? Huh? They've been through a lot of movie by now. Oh, damn. I'm so sorry. More than half. Yeah. More than half. I wonder how many of them watched the movie or wandered off or just waited to hear us scream at the camera and come running back. How does it feel watching She Creature? <laughs> Unless they're watching us on YouTube. You can, then they can just that? fast forward. Oh, you can just fast forward to the. Is there not going to be a time bumpers. like by the end of the year where you just cut up all the episodes and just have a full run of bumpers? I could do that. That's yeah. hilarious. I could do that. That'd be fun. You can see us get worse. Yeah. Progressively. Progressively more worse. unhinged. <laughs> I, I did have an idea for the uh, cable access though. We're going to take the old, 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 old episodes, like. 12 year old, 13 year old episodes. I was going to put a little scroll in the front about taking you back to the beginnings of, you know, the basement of Barry Morbid Origins, and uh, well, that, that way we can show those without having to make up new products. Is this episode going on cable access? Yeah, this will. Uh -oh. Okay. They're going to show on cable access an episode that YouTube told us to s piss off. <gasps> well, do you think cable access cares? They don't. No. Because we're going to be showing Chinese vampire stories <gasps> with the hopping vampires. Yeah. When we were much younger, all of us. When I was a young warthog. Warthog. Huh? We watched it so many times with subtitles hmm? that we remembered it being in English. Yeah. It is not. There is no dub for it anywhere I checked. No. Yeah. I looked. But it's the Chinese vampires, the hoppers. So... Uh, I don't know when that's going to be. Uh, just check your, uh, go to uh, publicmedianetwork.org, I think, or look up Public Media Network for Kalamazoo. I mean, a fountain of information. Uh, I'll find it and put it at the end <laughs> on the credits where you can go and see what we're showing. And I'll give you the dates of what's showing because I know the next five weeks what we're showing. This week was not that. It was like Fog <laughs> Island or something. Fog, Fog Island. Island. I didn't say it was a good movie. You're not like is. Creature of Destruction, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of Creature of Destruction, get out of here! Go watch a movie! You, uh, certainly picked a hot spot for our first session. You know, I'd hope to place you under hypnosis, but I hardly think this is a place. It wouldn't do you any good. You can't hypnotize me. You've been instructed to resist me. I see. Look, you must understand, I want to help you. Get you back to a real life. You've been living in a shadow. Just ask the questions, Doctor. Well, our book's going to the printer. Closed a deal with Beale Syndicate this morning. And uh, next month, 350 newspapers serialize the Marion Road story. How do you like that for quick profit? I salute you. Not I. It's that sales ability of yours. Oh, it's, it's much more than just sales ability. Oh, sure, sure. Mr. Crane, I think it's time we split 60-40 in my favor. Oh, just a minute. I don't have a minute. It's 60-40 or nothing. Well, I guess 
We can arrange something satisfactorily. I'm sure we can. Oh, yes, it's not a good idea to allow your family to go to the beach. Doc, don't press your luck. And you better lay off that prediction stuff. One miss, and our profits take a nosedive. I'm certain our good fortune will continue. Memo? I know it's Basso. If I said that, you'd say I wasn't taking the scientific approach. It's gotta be. Two young kids, wrong place at the wrong time. But I'll get him. I'll get him. sleep when it happened the last thing i remember was dr basso saying good night had he put you into a deeper state of hypnosis yes he said i needed the rest do you remember anything after he put you into that state nothing it's like i've been dead how do you feel now very tired as if i've been doing something very strenuous Strange. I would think that, uh, well, you'd feel rested. I know I should, but I never do. Ted? Well, go on. There's something wrong with me. I have the ability to kill. Most of us do. I don't mean that. There's something else. Can you tell me? No. You do know that you have to get away from him. You need to be weaned away from him. It'll take time. It's like getting rid of an infectious disease. Why are you wasting your time on me? Am I wasting my time? 
Yes. May I? I want to talk to you, Dorena. You heard about those two kids tonight? Yes. The whole town's in an uproar. I'm up against a stone wall, stymied. Five innocent people killed, not a sign of a human. Dorena, in my business, we have to be blunt. Somehow I know Basso's guilty. I just know it. That sounds like an accusation. You bet your life it is. Any evidence? No evidence, no proof, no nothing. Yet I know Basso hates the whole world and everybody in it, except himself. I believe he'd set a match to the whole thing if he could. Well, what do you think? About Basso? About Basso. I don't have any answers there either. Look, I want you to conduct a, a clinical examination of Basso. Use some of your own experts. Now that's impossible. Lieutenant, let me tell you something. Parapsychology is in its infancy. We don't prove, we don't disprove. We merely investigate. Now, this sort of thing could bloom into a full-grown carnival. And that's right up Basso's alley. The DA wants it. Well, what you need is a few more policemen with some magnifying glasses. Look, I can subpoena you if necessary. Check with my CO. Already have. Will you talk to Basso? I've done that, too. He'd be delighted. He would? Uh-huh. The rest is up to you. That business last night, I didn't like it. It was terrible. It uh, was coincidence, wasn't it? You want it to be coincidence? Of course. You will never believe. You brought the new contract? Yes, this appears to be much more satisfactory. Well, don't depend on any more changes. There's going to be an investigation this afternoon, a bunch of head shrinkers. An investigation? I'll try to stall it off. Why? This is what I want. Official recognition. Listen, these are not hysterical women. These are real doctors. I am a real doctor. Oh, come off it. Don't give me that stare. I can look right back at you. And you know what I see? I see a cheap fortune teller with delusions of grandeur. You shouldn't have said that. But you're a stupid man. Well, maybe I am. Anyway, business is business, and I'm sorry I blew up. It makes no difference. I've got some television people in tonight for the demonstration. I'll try to line up a network spot for you. You have relived part of your life as Marion Rhodes. Now you may rest. You will go into a deep sleep. details which you have heard have proven to be accurate. After the last demonstration, I sent a cable to England. There is a grave with the headstone reading Marion Ann Rhodes, 1600 to 1651. Could have been planted. Yes, she could be rehearsed. Perhaps you have created only a vaudeville act. That's very flattering. Could anyone have rehearsed the intimate details of her life in 17th century England? Her speech, her mannerisms, every statement this girl has made has been proven, consequent to its having been made. She may have read extensively. Not so. She is no scholar. She never finished school. Her life is a matter of record. Is that not so, Lieutenant Blake? Yes. 
Do you think this is a hoax, Ted? My mind is open. Gentlemen, gentlemen, it is quite simple. As men of science, you must know that anything that will shatter a long-held concept is usually rejected. I have taken this girl back to a life she led 300 years ago. I can take her even farther back. Say, to the moment of her soul's creation. Can you materialize her into a maniac that goes around the beach killing? Was that supposed to be a joke? Did it sound like a joke? I want some answers, Basso. Well, we all do. But this is a somewhat scientific examination, not a courtroom. I do not see how we can accomplish anything further. You cannot see because you do not want to see. I thought I wanted recognition from you. But now that I realize the truth, it means nothing to me. This has been impressive, but meaningless. Thank you, Doctor, for a very interesting afternoon. Yes. Doctor? Thank you, Doctor. And what I said about Basso still goes. But it's still just an opinion, Ted. I know, I know. But it's still one of the best opinions around. What is it you want me to do? Get rid of him. Good evening, stranger. Lynn, Ted thinks that we should dissolve our business with Basso. It'll make a million. It's a nice nest egg for you, too. Thanks for the offer. I'm sure I'll never have another like it. What's gotten into that boy? Here now. Everything's going to be all right. It doesn't matter. We'll be leaving the country tomorrow. I'm not going. You will be going. I'm staying with Ted. You will do as I say. Oh, no. I found the strength to resist you. Ted's given it to me. If I were not confident of our love, I wouldn't allow Dr. Dell to see you. You are mine. No one will ever take you away from me. You are mine. And I am yours. You do understand that. And believe it. Doctor! Shh. Mr. Crane. How are you? Everybody's here. I have some very important people I want you to meet. They're interested. Wait here. that even now you have the power within you to resist him. I'll help you. Together we'll fight him. Dorina, if you can resist him publicly, he'll have to let you go. Dorina, listen very carefully to me. It is Ted. It's Ted. I want you to be free. You must fight against Basso. I can help you. As he speaks to you, my own thoughts will join with yours. Good evening, Captain. Good evening. If you will excuse us, it's time to begin.
Good evening. I trust that those of you who have witnessed my demonstrations realize that the purpose is education, not entertainment. You will close your eyes in a deep, refreshing sleep. are heavy. You are in a state of complete repose. I will count to four and you will close your eyes in sleep. One, two, three, subject is not herself tonight. She is too tense. You are tense. Relax. Relax. I think we are ready to try again. Want to sleep. You are very tired. You want a pleasant sleep. Your eyes are very heavy. You are falling, falling into a deep sleep. I'm talking to you, Dorian. Everything all right? What's this all about, Crane? It's part of the act. Ladies and gentlemen, my subject is disturbed tonight. Her world is disturbed. I feel a menace to the people of this resort. I urge you all to leave Tanglewood and return to your homes. Give me your attention, please. I'm Lieutenant Blake, Police Department. I want everyone to do as Dr. Basso says, in an orderly manner. Now, go to your cars. When everyone is in a car, leave together. Stay together. I have men all along the road. Let's go. Escort. I'll stay here. Hasn't this thing gone far enough? Have it your way. But you remember that I warned all of you. All right, no, bring her out of it. Are you ordering me? Bring her out of it immediately. Suppose you get her out of it yourself. You pretend to be the expert.
get him. in spirit. Your interference made her waver. You killed that spirit. What do you gain by killing me? The worst you can be charged with is accessory to murder. I gain the satisfaction that the one who shattered my world pays for the offense. No! No! you leave me in this ugly world you were all that mattered to me soon soon we will be together in spirit again sort of physical link to her past. In destroying herself, the creature could not exist. She searched for freedom and found violence, terror, destruction, greed. Was Basil right? Is there a monster lurking within each of us? Waiting, waiting. Back there sweeping up you spiders. Sweep it? You yeah. sweep it up? There's there. bugs! <laughs> there where it's warm. Outside is snow. Yeah. Trying to crawl into my boots. If they're cold, if you're cold, they're cold. Put them in your mouth. Put them in your mouth! <laughs> oh! No! Never do that! You got about two seconds to put your toes in my mouth. <laughs> I'm just holding a gun. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> so I, I mentioned uh. So You've just... mentioned it every time! I'm gonna punch him off the desk. So, no. so talking about speaking him. of, Jacques, any uh, new, uh, exciting video games you wanna tell the fans, the viewers? Not now, but in the summer is the holy grail for when games are coming out. Oh, <laughs> yeah. There's no games going on right now? No, no, never at the beginning of the year. It's the wrong time. It's the wrong time. Wrong vibes. The wait for summer. That way, that the video games main audience can actually play the things. That way. <laughs> well, tell us what's on the agenda. Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. Whoop, whoop. Do you want a dragon that's a vampire? Yes. No. Yeah. 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 Dragon. Woo! <laughs> 
vampire no dragon. <laughs> Do you want the giant enemy crab to come back? Yes. I don't know what that is. It's a. Uh, is that like an OG? When in Mon uh, Monster Hunter has the uh, the Carapacian type monsters, they're big crabs. Big crabs. Yeah, big crabs are coming back. They're really cool. Big crabs are coming back. You heard yeah. it here first, folks. Shogun Sienator is coming back. He's the worst of the two. No, oh. I don't like fighting them. No, it's terrible. Okay. If he's coming back, they're probably going to bring back Bleed. Oh, I don't want that. Oh, I don't want Bleed. Bleed. Bayonetta 3 is coming out! Yeah! Is it for a system we have? Yeah. Yeah, because isn't it Switch? Switch! 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 Ah! The Switch. No, it's going to be for a different console that Nintendo releases only in the summer. They would do that. They would do don't, that. Don't start. Yeah, they'll, they'll don't do it. Don't jinx it. Because after all, now. Nintendo is hacks. Yes. <laughs> we'll have to go to their office and scare them with rattly chains. Ooh, Ooh. they can have a three. And a three. Woo. Oh, you know. And then for the people that don't like good gameplay or aiming, Splatoon 3 is also coming out or something. Oh, dang. Really? Yeah. I didn't realize that was a thing. This is, okay. Don't put your hand in there. Is this water? I don't care. That's death water. Don't put your hand in there. Forever ago, for you fans, remember we put this little tiny mask about this big. Yeah, you put the flesh in there. And now, after weeks of... Germination. Let's see it, that... that Look at him. It looks terrible. Ooh, ooh, he's Some of its color has come off because we left it in there too long. <laughs> he's kind of jello -y feeling. I'm not I am a monster that. man. Wow, I'm making you wash your hands when we're done here. Do you want to touch it? No, get him away from it? me. Oh! <coughs> I don't want to have to shower. This is hell. Cool. That was, that was cold. That was gross. Good thing I got a lab coat. Oh, when was the last time that thing was washed? <laughs> this is pretty new live going on. <laughs> it has been on the floor and wiped with grime. It's nasty. No. I don't think so. Do you think so? <laughs> there. Look. Pristine. Gotta set it on fire. There you go. Gotta burn it. Gotta burn it. Burn what, my coat? Yeah. No! It's the gross. buttons will get too hot. When Take the buttons off. Oh, if we decide that... This is the one. This is the final episode. We're gonna just set your coat on fire. We're just... With you in it! No! No! <laughs> we can make a, a straw dummy. Put the coat on the straw dummy. <laughs> We're gonna do mini Burning Man, but with your coat. We could, yes. we could get some M80s and stuff them with M80s and put the coat on the M80s and pull up the coat. Yes, I too enjoy fire hazards. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> uh, so, once again, folks. Folks, the uh, the movie was uh, Creature of Destruction. The movie was oh, She yeah. Creature. Larry Buchanan's epic thing that we watched. Well, I've watched it. He's watched it. He just doesn't remember. I, have I? You watched it. I've watched She Creature, yeah. <laughs> Creature of Destruction. Creature of Destruction. It's the same movie. It's different. The one's in color. Same. Yeah, same. the Creature of Destruction creature isn't hot. No, right. she's still kind of no, Danny. No, bad. No, bad. Like, not gonna lie, kind of a baddie. Stay over there. Okay. So, and, and again, if you're interested in the uh, the film. Film? The film. Which it's film 15, up. It's 15 bucks. Why would you ever be interested in that? Because um, sometimes you like comedy. Free shipping. It's hilarious. Just wait a week. It'll probably be marked down. Or something. Oh. Uh, check down. No. Check down the, uh, check on the uh, end thing. And the part where I talked about the first time, I'll put stuff in both. You're, you're going to see uh, next episode we put up, No one bought the movies and we're giving them away! Like, That's... We're going to hold a contest if the, the first five, 50 people that send in the thing get a free movie! What? <laughs> Why do all <laughs> our fans sound like Mickey Mouse? No, we're that's not. us doing it. <laughs> that's us doing Mickey Mouse? The movie's Mouse? bad, but free movie! to pay for those I'm not giving away! We, oh, I've heard that before! Uh, we gotta stop the impressions. We'll get the strike from get the, the old mouse. We'll get yeah, we're gonna get kneecapped by the mouse. We're touching it. There's a spider on it. Is there? Do you ever think about throwing a broom as hard as you can at something? Ow! Just pick this up. And just put it over here. There you go. Where's the spider? It's on it. On that? Yeah. yeah. It's oh. on the red skull. We get Captain America down here to kick his butt. Well, well he couldn't finish the job. Ha! <gasps> Harsh. Ha! 
All right, folks. <laughs> this has been a great episode. We're glad we're back. We're glad we're back. We're, oh, you're glad we're back. I'm, I'm are, not. Are I you, didn't are want you glad to, we're back? I didn't want to be down he, here. He, he had to be... Oh. I am yearning for my bed. <laughs> oh. Yearning for the sweet, sweet embrace of his bed. So, <laughs> until next time, I am always your host, Bear Marvin, lovely co-host, Jacques Strap. Good night! He has the power to make poop leave your body. Yeah, yeah, yeah.